Galatians 3 verse 23. But before faith came, stop. Robin, explain. But before faith came. Before Christ came. Give me another term. You're right. Before what? Give me another. We already read it, Robin. Robert. But before Christ came. Before the new covenant came. Right? We were kept under the law. You, next to Robin. What's your name, brother? Tony. Tony, what does that mean? We were kept under the law. The law of the old, the old covenant. Right, we were kept under the old covenant. Go ahead. Shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Shut up unto the faith which should afterwards. After what, Bezalel? After, after that was revealed. After what, Isaac? After the old laws of the law. After the old covenant. The old covenant. Go ahead. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. Wherefore, now here Krishna will hit you in the head. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. What was the law he was talking about? Ezekiel. The old covenant. The old covenant of what? The old covenant sacrifice. Of animal sacrifice. Read it again. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. To bring us unto Christ. To bring us unto what? Give me another term, Zephaniah. New covenant. To bring us to the new covenant. Go ahead. That we might be justified by faith. That we might be justified by Christ. Come on. But after the faith has come. But after the faith has come, meaning what? What does that part mean? Baraka. After the new covenant. But after that, the new covenant has come. We are no longer under a schoolmaster. What does that mean, Phil? We're no longer under the first covenant. We are no longer under the first covenant. The old covenant of animal sacrifice. But a Christian will say, see? We ain't got to do the law no more. That's what a dumb Christian will say. Having no understanding why. Because Paul wrote things hard to be understood. Which those that are unlearned and unstable will wrestle with this. Okay? What verse was that? That was verse 25. 25? Now, Matthew 5, 17. <clears throat> we coming back to some of these hard things. I ain't, I ain't letting, that alone, letting that alone today. Matthew 5, verse 17. If you don't remember anything, you always go back to Christ. Who is the Savior, Paul or Christ? Right, right, right. Christ. Let's see what Christ said. Go ahead. Matthew 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. So Christ fulfilled what? Azariah. Lord. That's right, there you go. Remember John the Baptist said about Christ, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. From there, watch this now. More of Paul, Colossians 2.14. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Mmm, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. A Christian will use that and say, see, the laws are done away with. But let's examine the law. Give me Leviticus 20.13. I want to examine that law. You tell me what was nailed to the cross and taken out of the way. Leviticus 20 verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death. What was taken away? What was blotted out out of that verse? <laughs> I want to see who's thinking. Tony, read the verse for Tony. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. What was blotted out in that verse? What was nailed to the cross in that verse? Because a Christian will say, you can be homosexual. That's for they all to get offended. <sighs> Barnabas, yeah. the death part, the death. How do we know that's the part that was blotted out? Here's a clue. We read it earlier in the beginning of the class. 
Zephaniah. Let's see who did it. Acts 13, 38. Let's go back now to Colossians 2, 14 again. So we read Leviticus 20, 13 just for an example. Go ahead. And we're going to get some more. I'm going to see who's thinking. Colossians 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. So what was against us? Those judgments. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. Stop. <laughs> now this is another famous scripture. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, my brother, or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. So we ain't got to keep none of that. But is that really what that's talking about? Who was going? Here's my first question. It says, let no man therefore judge you. Who was running around throughout Jerusalem judging everyone? That's the first thought you got to get in your mind, Josiah. Who was running through Jerusalem judging people? The scribes and the Pharisees. Once you got that thought, now you're a little better. Now read it again. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moons or of the Sabbath day. Now you need to know because a Christian will say, see, you can eat pork. But that's not what that's talking about. Here's a precept that explains that. Isaiah 45, I mean Ezekiel 45 and 17. Ezekiel 45 verse 17. You'll be amazed. I've heard some quote unquote Israelites break that verse down and say, you can eat whatever you want. You don't got to keep no holidays no more. And I'm looking at them like, are you Israel indeed? <laughs> Ezekiel 45, verse 17. And it shall be the prince's part. To that, the prince is the priest. That's the prince. Read it again. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings. Meat offerings. Listen good, Robin. Listen good, Tony and Steve. To give meat offerings, go ahead. And drink offerings. And drink offerings. In the feast. In the feast. And in the new moon. And in the new moon. And in the Sabbath. And in the Sabbath. And in all solemnities. And in all solemnities. Of the house of Israel. Of the house of Israel. Hmm. Let's go back to Colossians now. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. What is the meat talking about, Steve? Is that talking about pork? What is it talking about? No, you didn't read what we just read, Steve, in Ezekiel 45, 17. Precept upon precept. Precept must be upon precept. Corey. Um, talking about the animal sacrifice. Give me the words. Your answer is like, Old Testament. No, I want the words we just read. Read it, Asaph. Let no man. Let no man. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. What is it talking about? Azariah, help us. Meat offerings. Hold on, mate. I want you to get you get Ezekiel. And you stay in Colossians. I want you to stay in Colossians. There's a reason. There's a reason. We gotta look at them both together. Gotta look at the words. Because a Christian Israelite, oh, is this such a thing? Will come with some stupidity. Ezekiel 45, 17. You you read yours and then y'all stop. You come. Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Wait, y'all stop right there. You got it? Come on. You still ain't there yet. I want Ace House first. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. Stop. Go ahead. Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 17. <laughs> and it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings. Stop. What kind of offerings, brothers? Meat offerings. Asaph? Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. Stop. Hey, y'all stop? And drink offerings. Drink offerings. Hey, sir? Or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moons, or of the Sabbath days, in the feasts, and in the new moons, mm. and in the Sabbaths, in all solemnities of the house of Israel. Y'all see that? So it's talking about meat offerings and drink offerings. What is that going with? Sacrifices. Sacrifices. Go back to Colossians 2. Again, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. Let's get some more. Let's get some more. Get Leviticus 23 37. Here's another precept. 
you will be surprised. I'm shocked when I've seen Israelites use this verse and sound like Baptist preachers. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 17. Verse 37. Verse 37. These are the feasts of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an, to off, offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering. Meat offerings. A sacrifice. A sacrifice. And a drink offering. And drink offerings. Everything upon his day. Everything upon his day because different holidays require different what? Sacrifices. Sacrifices meat offerings and drink offerings. Let's go back. Here's, wait, here's another precept. Numbers 28, 9 through 14. Don't ever let a dumb Christian or an ignorant Israelite try to deceive y'all in not keeping the commandments. And they'll use Colossians 2.16. Numbers 28 verse 9. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot. You see what was done on the Sabbath day? Two lambs of the first year without spot was offered. And two tenth deals of flour for meat offerings. Meat offerings, come on. Mingled with oil and the drink offerings. And the drink offerings. Come on. They're up. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. Come on. And in the beginnings of your months. What's the beginning of our months, brothers? No. The new moons. You shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord. Two young bullocks. Two young bullocks. See, this is different than on the Sabbath. That's right. <laughs> and one round. Seven lambs of the first year without spot. And three tenths deal of flour for a meat offering. Meat offerings. The bullock and the ram. What's the meat offering? Was that it? Mingled with oil for one bullock and two tenths deals of flour for a meat offering. Mingled with oil. Number 14. And a several tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb for a burnt offering of sweet savor. Come on. A sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And their drink offering. And their drink offerings. Come shall, on. shall be half and hint of wine <laughs> unto a bullock. And the third part of him unto a ram. So for every bullock you have to have a half hen of wine. Go ahead. And a fourth part of an hen unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. Amen. Let's go back to Colossians now. So now, Colossians 2.16. Colossians chapter 2 verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. In meat offerings or drink offerings. So wait a minute, let me see who got the thought now. Because we read it all through the beginning of the lesson. What were the Pharisees trying to judge the apostles about? Meat or drink. Ah, I want some new hands. Who's hiding behind the pole right there? Mike. Mike. Mike Allen. I didn't even see you back there. I saw a shirt on the side. What was the <laughs> argument? They were trying, the Pharisees was telling the apostles and the disciples of Christ that they had to what? What were they trying to judge them? Sacrifice. Yes, sacrifice. How come y'all ain't doing the meat offering sacrifices? Why ain't you doing the drink offering sacrifices? Read it again. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon. Because on the holy days, like the new moon, there were certain sacrifices. I don't see you apostles doing that. Go ahead. Or on the Sabbath days. On the Sabbath days, there was drink offerings and meat offerings. I don't see you apostles or disciples of Christ doing that. Come on. Which are a shadow of things to come. Which are a shadow. Those offerings are a shadow of things to come. Go ahead. But the body is of Christ. The body is of Christ.